So you chose. Me. I am flattered. Welcome, Beaver. Into the darkness. So let's follow the breadcrumbs that Toby left for us. Revisiting entry 17, something should stand out to you. Do you see it? It's not what the words say, but rather how they're written. In sentence fragments broken up into individual lines. That same style of writing looks an awful lot like the messages that began appearing on Undertale's Twitter page in the 24 hours leading up to Deltarune's surprise release. And if we read those tweets assuming that they were written by Gaster, they suddenly make a lot more sense. Have you been looking for me? Well, yeah, Gaster. You're the main thing that's been on everyone's mind for years since Undertale's release. How wonderful. I have been looking for you as well. Well, now you've made me blush. Hope you're happy. I have something. Something I want to show you. Something I think you will find very, very Interesting. What a very, very interesting choice of words he uses there as well. Gaster uses this exact same phrase over and over again to describe what he's about to show us. This time on Twitter, the same way that he used it to describe his next experiment back in Entry 17. And as we know now, what Gaster would come to show us was Deltarune, suggesting that Deltarune and its Dark World was indeed the next experiment that Gaster was referring to in Entry 17. 24 hours later, Gaster left even more messages on Twitter. I mean, this dude is really savvy on social media despite being an ethereal dimension hopping mad scientist. One in particular stood out. I look forward to creating a new future with you. new future, huh? This, at the time it was released, seemed like just a throwaway line. But the implications here are now huge in the aftermath of Deltarune's release. That one tweet basically reveals Gaster's entire plan across both of these games. Consider this. Entry number five in True Lab directly stated that the determination found in human souls is what allows us to change our fate. Quote, I've done it. Using the blueprints, I've extracted it from the human souls. I believe this is what gives their souls the resolve to change fate. Let's call this power determination. This is what Gaster has been building to. With his earlier experiments shown in Undertale, he created the Core and the Determination Extractor, devices that would allow monsters to harness the power of humans. This power, if properly handled, would enable them to change their fate. Then, with his next experiment, the one we hear about in Entry 17, the one that implicitly references Deltarune, it's shown that he's found a way to do exactly that. Use the connected player, us, as a source of determination to create a new future. A future where monsters were never trapped in the underground in the first place. The future without war that I mentioned last episode and the one that we are actively playing through in the events of Deltarune. So if that's Gaster's plan, then who is Gaster? Well, I think to some extent it's Toby Fox, the creator of these games. I mean, think about it. Gaster is just as much the game maker as Toby is. I mean, sure, Toby Fox created the games, but look at Gaster's behavior. He's the one talking to us on Twitter. He's the one asking us to join his game, getting our human souls to connect, apologizing for delays, and then thanking us for our participation. Toby physically made this game world, but it's Gaster who's the one pulling the strings and running these games as tests, both inside the game lore and in the outside world. Think that's a stretch? Maybe, but then look at this. It's an image that should be unforgettable to anyone who's played Undertale before. It's the pixelated, distorted TV face that appears as part of Photoshop Flowey's design in the final moments of Undertale. Now, I have always loved this boss fight. It is one of the most twisted, insane boss battles in gaming history. But because of how jarring it is, none of us have ever actually stopped to really notice and analyze Flowey's design here. Because what is the TV face? I always just assumed it was Flowey's true form until I stopped and thought about it while doing this episode, and obviously it couldn't be Flowey's true form because Flowey is a monster. He's as real. And the face is clearly a human face, which means that this human face trapped inside a TV screen must be someone else. Someone else who's aware of the multiple timelines. Someone else who's in command of the whole save load mechanic of this world. Could this face 
B. Gaster. I mean, he's certainly our best in-game candidate. Now, in the wikis, it's widely believed that this face is actually the image of Toby Fox's face, which makes it all the more interesting that prior to the release of Deltarune, Toby Fox's Twitter avatar was just his name on a black background. But earlier this year, he switched it, transitioning to a familiar face, that very same pixelated TV face, right before the release of a game introduced by Gaster and seeded throughout with a ton of Gaster Easter eggs. If Toby Fox does indeed see himself and Gaster as connected in some way in these games, well then this change would make a ton of sense. If this were at least symbolically true, then the creation that Gaster falls into isn't the core or some broken machine in Sans's lab, it's the game itself. It's Undertale. Both Gaster and Toby Fox fell into their creations, and are now godlike figures dominating these two worlds, bridging the universes between them. And Deltarune, perhaps, represents Toby's attempt to piece Gaster back together and let the player finally peek behind the curtain. But hey, that's just a theory. One possible theory. To see what you missed in the other timeline, click the box you see on screen right now. And a very, very special thanks to both Win on Reddit and Jeff from Mother's Basement for helping out with this massive series of videos. Your help and your ideas were awesome for a series of games that can be analyzed and dissected endlessly. If you see Win on Reddit, say hello. And if you see Jeff here on YouTube, tell him he's a good man.